It's time now for Send the Light broadcast with Pastor Frank Painter, coming today to share precious truths from God's Word. Let me pray with you. Father, I pray that you'd bless this morning, strengthen us and help us and fill me with the Holy Spirit. God, give us what you'd have us to, to get from the Scriptures today. And thank you, Lord, for hundreds of years in this valley, people have met together and come to worship together and to meet together and to present the gospel of the Lord Jesus Christ. And we thank you again for this opportunity in this country church to meet, Lord, with your people. Bless us now and bless them and their families and save souls for Jesus' sake. In his name I pray, amen. Verse 18, Matthew 1. Now the birth of Jesus Christ was on this wise, when as his mother Mary was espoused to Joseph. Before they came together, she was found with child of the Holy Ghost. And then Joseph, her husband, being a just man and not willing to make her a public example, was minded to put her away privately. But while he thought on these things, behold, the angel of the Lord appeared unto him in a dream, saying, Joseph, thou son of David, fear not to take unto thee Mary thy wife, for that which is conceived in her is of the Holy Ghost. And she shall bring forth a son, and thou shalt call his name Jesus, for he shall save his people from their sins. And all this was done that it might be fulfilled, which was spoken of the Lord by the prophet, saying, Behold, a virgin shall be with child, and shall bring forth a son, and they shall call his name Emmanuel, which being interpreted is God with us. Then Joseph, being raised from the sleep, did as the angel of the Lord had bidden him, and took unto him his wife, and knew her not till she had brought forth her firstborn son, and he called his name Jesus. Wonderful story in the message of Christ's birth. The birth of the Lord Jesus Christ, the word Christ means the anointed one. The anointed Messiah would come, the anointed Christ. There's a movie that shows about Christmas time every year. It's called Miracle on, what is that, 42nd Street? 34th Street, now yeah, that's right. How many of y'all watch that? We, uh, we sat last night and watched uh, the Christmas Carol about Scrooge. I've been watching that since I've been little. <laughs> and then It's a Wonderful Life with um, Jimmy, um, Jimmy uh, Stewart. And uh, we didn't get to see that this year. I think they slipped up on showing that one. Why, say something to Kay. We might borrow that. <laughs> miracle on 34th Street. Well, in the Bible, it's the miracle at Bethlehem. It's where Christ was born. The miracle. And all the wonder of it all. And in this chapter, uh, the virgin birth of the Lord Jesus Christ. Miracle. Uh, and how he was born in Bethlehem and uh, born in a stable. And um, Jesus Christ, the beginning, as far as his human side, began at Bethlehem. I think all of us realize that Jesus Christ was the eternal Son of God. You read in Matthew and and Luke about the birth of Christ. We read in Mark about him as a suffering servant. 
But when you read the Gospel of John, it's he that always has been there. Jesus Christ never had a beginning. And what we see is his human side here at Bethlehem being born. Jesus Christ, who was the God-man, God and man, and one person, the Lord Jesus Christ. The birth of Christ brought joy and peace. It still does. When we realize of Christmas time, Christmas time makes people, I think, better for some reason. No wonder the angel says it's a time of joy and peace. It's also a time of worship. It's why we're here this morning. We've come to worship the Lord. The shepherds came and they seen the star and they followed it. They went to find out where that star would lead him to the Savior and as they worshiped. The wise men, they came from far off to do what? To worship the Lord. And after the birth of Christ, when they brought Jesus in, Simeon, Simeon worshiped the Lord. And then Anna, the prophetess, who lived in the temple, she praised the Lord and thanked God for His goodness. We come this morning to worship the Lord. Amen. Not to worship a man or a program or a church, but we're here this morning to worship the Lord of lords and the King of kings. And by the way, He's worthy of all honor and glory. The wise men brought gifts, gold and frankincense, mirth. When they arrived, uh, Jesus was already in the house. He may have been a year and a half old. But they came, it was a time of giving. Today we give gifts, it's a time of giving, sometimes a time of receiving. But that's really not the true meaning of Christmas. The true meaning is the Savior has come. God spared not His own Son, but delivered Him up for us all. I've won more people to the Lord with John 3.16 than any of the other scriptures. And I know a lot of other scriptural methods. But to me, John 3.16 has always been so wonderful. For God so loved the world. It's where it all begins. That God gave, God gave His only begotten Son. If we'll believe, we'll not perish, but we'll have everlasting life. God loved us. God gave. The only thing that he asks us to do is to believe, to accept his son as our Lord and Savior. A time of giving, sometimes a time of receiving. All of us ought to be willing to give our best to the Lord. Did you understand me? To give our best, not our seconds or our thirds but to give our best to the Lord. Do we ask that question to ourselves. Do we give our best to the Lord? And then it's a time to reflect on God's goodness to us. Sometimes it's just wonderful to just cut the TV off and just sit and think about God's goodness to us. The goodness of God leadeth a man to repentance. God never struck me down when I was lost. But I thought, started thinking, you know, God's been so good to us. Instead of the judgment of God, it was the goodness of God that brought me to salvation. And yet today, I think much about God's goodness to us. 
just sometimes my mind centers on that. Kay, are you, Kay will come by and she'll say, are you asleep? No. Just thinking about God's blessings. God's been good to all of us, I think. We reflect on God's goodness to us. My dad grew up as a young boy in Stanley. And uh, he grew up during the Depression years. There's, there's a couple folks in here, here this morning that grew up in those years. But my dad would say, he'd say, Buck, y'all always called me Buck. He said, Buck, when I, when I was a little boy, all I got was an orange and a little bit of hard candy. And, a, and he said, I'd get a couple marbles. That was all the outward that they received. And you know, that's really enough. The main thing is that we look to the Lord Jesus Christ and give God thanks for His Son coming in this world. And then Christmas time is a time to be content. It's not a time to want everything. Well, what is it that we don't have? Amen. Contentment. The Bible says that contentment with godliness is great gain. Some of the happiest times you'll ever find in your life is you're just content. Tim, what God's given you. You're content. Contentment with godliness is great gain. Paul said it like this in Philippians. He says, I've learned in whatsoever state I am therewith to be what? Content. Sometimes we've got to learn to be content and to be thankful. And I think this is a good Christmas time to be able to do that. And then I was thinking about the Lord Jesus. Some of you born and raised here in the county. Some of you, different spots. The Lord Jesus Christ died not very far from where he was born. Did you ever think about that? It's not that far from Bethlehem to Jerusalem. And there 2,000 years ago, they crucified the Son of God. When you look at the whole package... You say, well, what's the most important? You know, there's a couple things that's hard to distinguish. First of all, the birth of Christ brought Jesus in this world. That's why we celebrate Christmas. And then Christ would live as a man for 33 and a half years and uh, they would reject him. And they had put him on the cross of Calvary, crucify the Son of God. Second great event. And then on that third day, he rose from the dead. And the Bible says, according to the scriptures. Yes, it took the death. But if Christ would have only died, and there be no resurrection. We have no hope this morning then. We have no faith, no hope. But we're found false witnesses or liars because we testify that Jesus Christ did come and die and was buried and rose again. And that's what our hope is. We celebrate Christmas in a couple months. We'll be celebrating Easter Sunday. He arose. That's the gospel. It's the message that we take to the lost, to the unsaved, that God loves him and Jesus died for him. In the Bible, 
in 2 Kings chapters 4. Here's a story that it just seems like it leaped out, leaped out to me. Here is a woman in 2 Kings chapters 4 that had been a preacher's wife. One of the wives of the sons of the prophets. And uh, she lived in the days of Elijah, the great uh, prophet of God. And she was in a dilemma. Have any of you ever been in a dilemma? Don't hear that word much anymore. She owed some money. Now, I don't know how she got in debt, but she owed some money, and she didn't have no way of paying it back. And uh, the people that she owed the money to was going to come and take her two sons as bondmen, servants. And she went to Elijah, and he said, what is it that you want? And she said, uh, we owe a debt and we cannot pay it and they're going to take care of my two sons. And she said, my husband, my husband feared the Lord. She was reminding him that he had been a good man of God and feared the Lord. And so he said, what do you want me to do for you? She said, I, I, I'm not sure, but I need help. Help of some kind. And I believe you to be a man of God. And he said, well, it's strange how that God asks things sometimes. He already knows answers. And God says, well, what do you have in the house? What do you have in the house? Is there anything that, that's worth selling? What about the dining room table and the wooden buffet and grandma's dishes? No, we don't, we don't have any of that. What about a recliner? How many of you want to say thank God for recliners? I about wore mine out. Kay, Kay told me, said, after Christmas, I'm, I'm going to get you, I want you to get a new recliner. And she said, I'm going to give you $100 on it. Well, I said, what happens to this partnership of half and half? <laughs> Had to remind her of that. 50 50, honey. So I don't know how all that's going to work out. <laughs> what about the couch? Can we? Well, she didn't have a couch. Had two old hardback chairs. Don't we? Don't have anything. We don't have anything that we can sell. Anything worth worth having? And she said, "Well, that's really not the whole truth." We've, we've got a pot of oil. A pot of oil. And Elisha said, okay. Take and go to your neighbors and borrow some pots, buckets. Go on, go, go, go. They didn't know why. Just go borrow some. And so the boys went out and they borrowed some pots and pans and brought him back and Elisha said to, to Mama, I can picture her. She's a wife of a preacher. I can picture her. I'll know her when I get to heaven. She's a little chunky. A little chunky. 
Ain't nothing wrong with that. I've been chunky ever since I've been born. I come out of the womb chunky. <laughs> Amen. She was a little chunky and, and she wore an apron. She wore an apron. And Elisha told her, said, now, you take and you pour these pots of oil. Take the one and that's got oil in it, and you pour out into these empty pots. So she got, she got the pot full of oil, and she poured it out. And she said, give me, give me another one. And they set that one aside, and she poured out, and it was full. She said, set that one aside. And probably they went through this same procedure time and time again. And them boys started, Mama, ain't it no bottom in that pot? Where's all that all coming from? It's the same type of miracle, or one miracle that happened in Bethlehem. That was another miracle in the Old Testament. And... They filled all these pots, and she said, bring me another one. And they said, Mama, there ain't no more pots. They're all filled. I like Mama. When I would get home from school, I'd walk in the door, and I'd say, Mama! And then I'd walk to the stove and see what was cooking till where my heart's been most of my life. (laughs) Mama, they're all full. And then Elijah said, take these pots of oil and go and sell them. And then he said, pay your bills. Don't make a lot more bills than what you can pay. Pay your bills. And then take the rest and live off of it. Live off of it. That don't mean go shopping and spend to the last dollar. It's the way some people are. They'll spend to their last dollar. Pay your debt. And then live on the rest. God performed a miracle for that mama and her two sons. They never did have to be sold as bondmen. God's been doing stuff for us all of our lives. All of our lives, God's been doing them kind of things. When when I was a boy, my my dad left mama, and he, he went to Nevada, and there you could get a divorce very quickly. So they had separated. Dad had gone to Nevada. And we lived in this big old house. It had been closed up for years. A guy had tuberculosis. And they rented it to us. And we went in and moved in it. Everywhere we lived, we were poor. But we always cleaned the place up nice. Says something. And I'll never forget we had, we had run out of food. Six, seven year old boy. And it was probably 12 foot ceilings in this old house. You ever remember some of these old houses? And the cupboards was way up there. And I remember opening the cupboard. And it wasn't any food. It wasn't nothing. And that Saturday morning, my aunt and uncle showed up. Evidently, they pulled around back and they brought several bags of groceries in. I didn't know the Lord, but I knew it had to be somebody that loved us. And that was the Lord dealing with me as a six-year-old boy 
and he was trying to say, Frank, I'm going to take care of you. And I'm glad that eventually I accepted Christ as my Lord and Savior. You see, God's been doing all that for me all these years. This morning, you could raise your hand and say, Pastor, I've got the same story. Just God took care of us. I might be a little different in my beliefs, but I believe that God takes care of the heirs of salvation many times before we ever come to know the Lord. God takes care of us. And He did. And He has. And if all of you boys and girls in here this morning, learn to trust in the Lord. And in hard times ought to bring us to Christ. Hard times ought to make us want the Lord and to believe in the Lord and to accept Him and to serve Him, to be faithful to Him. It's the Lord. So this Christmas, may God help us to be content in whatsoever state we're in. May God help us to be appreciative of what He's done for us. This evening, our family will come in and I'll just look around and take pictures in my mind. I don't have to take them on camera, but I'll take pictures in my mind of how wonderful it is, how God's blessed us. Today, if you're here and you don't know Christ as your Savior, we'd love to be able to lead you to the Lord. We'll take time and show you how to be saved. We'd be glad to do that this morning. You that are saved, I'd encourage you to live and serve the Lord. What a wonderful Christ. And we can rejoice in Him. Would you bow your heads with me for just a moment? For her heads bowed and her eyes closed. Is there anybody here this morning that would say, Pastor, I'm not sure that I'm saved. Would you please pray for me? Is there anybody like that this morning? I'd li- I-, I would hate the thought that, that anybody that sat under my ministry would end up dying and going to hell. So I try to, to preach the gospel and let you know that God loves you and Jesus wants you to be saved. Is there anybody here this morning that say, pray for me?